Well guys, hope you're doing well. In this video, I'm gonna show you guys how I bricked uh, my KS5L. So hopefully that helps somebody not to brick it. And uh, again, uh, once you brick, it's just pretty much uh, you're done. You can't reset to the factory settings. It's, it's, it's all, uh, you're all stuck with your miner until you replace the board or you uh, get some service from, uh, I don't know, the T-Swift paid service. I haven't tried that, but in this video, I'll show you what I did. So when I initially went on this unit and uh, clicked to select the file, I went and put initial update like you normally do, right? So you get this file, click update, uh, restart the unit. And then after you restart, you go back and select your overclocked firmware so I did, I believe, the, I think I clicked on the highest by accident. You're supposed to start with the lowest uh, or like, you know, the second. Don't start with the very high one because you may your chips may not uh, take it. Anyways, I did that and I thought like, should I need to, uh, or I clicked on the wrong firmware, which I can't now recall, but Either way, if I use that firmware or potentially, I think I may clicked, mix clicked, because uh, I had these two folders here, one with the KS5L, uh, uh, the uh, dev fee, dev fee, in its number three, it's the third update. Now, in this update, you have a great uh, updated also the steps in readme files, so right here, you have to read those all upgrade steps. Also read entirely the whole text. There's a bunch of stuff that you can brick your um, firmware and how and all these descriptions all through here. But I haven't seen, and I think this is new that should be added, but I think it's uh, what happened is when I did initial update, um, I did the initial and then I switched to one of the clocks so the possibility that I went to the wrong uh, folder and clicked on the uh, KS0 Ultra, now I put it in a separate folder, right? So if I did any of these clocks and then I said, shoot, I need to go back to initial uh, firmware. So after you install any clocks firmware, uh, you have to be really careful to move anywhere. and. So I sort of like, should I need to start over again? So I go to initial update again. And as soon as I did initial update after overclocks, it bricked my uh, KS5L. So this is what gonna be a video about it, uh, how I fixed it. And obviously there is no fix for it, uh, but you'll see in this video how I put it back and running. Uh, now also be very careful when you go through this uh, after initial update, as soon as you start doing any of the clocks, don't go any factory reset, uh, don't do hard reset, or try to do initial update because you can break, you will break probably your unit like I did. All right, so let's get to this video. I'll be uh, going to the shed, pulling out the unit from my uh, from fluid. It's an immersion tank. Uh, I put it in the tank just so I could do overclocks for this unit and. Uh, We'll be testing those uh, overclocks in the different videos, but this video is for breaking and how you need to be uh, extra careful following instructions. So I would think you need another step here. After the step number two, you should probably have step 2A before do not use, after this step, after step two, do not use initial any longer. So you don't wanna use initial probably need to revert update, use this file to go back to the factory uh, uh, preset. So anyways, uh, let's get to it. Let's go to the shed, pull out the unit and see what happens. All right, guys, so you can see my uh, KS5L bricked. Uh, in that case, all four of the lights are on and nothing going on, so it will not hash. Uh, so while I'm need to do is um, unbreak it. The only way I could do it now is try to swap the board. Now this board is from KS5M. I saw that I have KS3L board, uh, KS5L board, but apparently it's KS5M. So 
I will try it. If it doesn't work, I'll have to wait for my KS5 L board to arrive. Or I will try to unbreak it with the T Swift paid version um, or paid service. I don't know if that worked, but let's try. Let's get it out and try to swap the board, see if it even gonna start and I will see it on the web GUI and what I will see there kind of interesting to test it out and see what KS5M uh, board will do because it's lowering the clock so my guess it will be actually lower uh, to 440 and it will perform probably uh, a lot lower hash rate but at least it may work so we'll see Alright, so the fluid has got pretty, pretty clear now. Uh, before I got the fluid, it's all uh, bubbling. So now with the four units, it's pretty, uh, the level got higher and it's a lot cleaner now. So I need to get my gloves, pull this unit out and swap the board. Alright, so now I have to take this cover off. Be careful with this screw. I'm gonna put all the screws because I'll be uh, doing a bunch of this swapping back and forth. Uh, hopefully not. Let's see. I have to disconnect all these cables now. Uh, they became a little bit stiff, so I have to be really careful. And by the way, I had to remove this whole uh, piece, I forgot, because it's actually uh, connected at the bottom, so. Get two more screws at the bottom. All right, so I'm gonna disconnect the all the cables from the board carefully, so we don't damage anything. Uh, so one, two, three. So it goes one, and then two, three. Now I have to remember how it goes. The first one goes there, and then second board goes here, and the third board goes there. Um, I hope that's how I can do it back. So. Boards looks pretty much alike, even though it's completely different boards. Kind of worries me, but uh, well, let's see what it's gonna do. I hopefully it's not gonna damage the hash boards because that's gonna be horrible. I'll, uh, the highest risk, don't ever do that. It's the uh, super risky uh, to put the wrong board. have this all spoofers connected here so we're just gonna slide it back here and again this is number two this is number three four so just connected back the way it was Previous setup. All right, so 
So let's put the cover back on. Uh, we we'll have to ride the scoopers somehow. So they're not on the way, just like that. really is to feed this back uh, to make sure yeah it's not very easy way when the plate attached to do it right there so I guess best way is just to fit it probably uh, the plate later I guess so I'll just attach one screw on each side because I don't think it's the way it will work Just want to fold it up a little bit. All right, guys. So this is the uh, the moment of the real test here. What's gonna happen to this unit with the KS five M? Board. All right, so let's see. Going down the liquid. Boom. Connecting the power back in. Connecting the Ethernet cable. And turning on the power. Super scary. Wow. Okay, so all the lights on. I need to find this machine on the network. It's gonna be a new machine, so in order to see it, so I'll have to go real quick now. And try to get the info on that uh, machine. So let's see first on the lights if it's even gonna uh, start the miner on the network and this green I mean this lights gonna go to green flashing from the red I hope you guys could see that right there okay so so far nothing it's still all red lights there so not much luck I don't know it's probably not gonna work guys uh, gee hopefully not gonna damage anything all right so yeah looks like the boards maybe it cannot recognize the hard boards and it just oh it start leaking so uh i'll go on the web buoy let's see what's happening so obviously with the new uh hash board now i have a new ip address so i found it i uh changed my mining pools uh, ever since started but what's weird look at the uh, at the firmware version it's saying it is ice river uh, ks 5l so I'm not sure in the, so in the web GUI it shows like ks 5l uh, and it looks like it's running on the newer firmware uh, already updated firmware and uh, same clock 650 so it's not using the ks5m clocks really weird i saw that um uh, something wrong with that um 
board, but it's, I don't know, maybe it's universal. I have, I um, I cannot confirm that. I haven't asked Ice River yet. I'll probably, I may ask them, but take a look. The, the frequency are all from KS5L. Uh, so I'll give it uh, maybe a couple hours run. And you could see right now, so far, it's just five minute rate, 10 gigahash. So not too bad. Um, I don't know if it's gonna be performing lower. This actually was my, uh, one of the best performing KS5L. It was doing uh, 12, 11.8. Right now, obviously it was not connected overnight because I uh, did the brick, uh, brick that uh, device. So it's 11.7 was average. So hopefully on the pool, I'll get that average back again and I'll update you guys. But uh, looks like KS5M board did work on this KS5L uh, and it's a June batch by the way with the same fan you saw it in the video so anyways um, the idea there be extra careful uh, not to break your board uh, and this one has been running on overclocks uh, for an uh, hour hour 25 minutes uh, let's see what's on the pool we get so far uh, we don't get the good average it's 12.2 terahash but I don't get this average yet. You could see that, right? 1222, but the average, it's not gonna get there until I probably run the full 24 hours on this clock, 670, we'll see if it was um, doing um, that overclock at all, or it's performing better than before, then we'll keep it, right? So anyways, do your research, guys, when you do uh, your overclocks and Please, please follow the instructions. Very, very important not to go back to initial settings because you're gonna break your uh, unit. Same for Ultra. K0 Ultra is pretty much the same way. You have to turn off your Ice River monitor prior updating your firmware and go step by step, follow up. Don't go back to initial because you may break your unit as well. Uh, I hope this helps somebody to make decision and also not to damage uh, your unit. So be extra careful. I'll be watching and posting an update probably in about a day or two. All right, we'll see you guys on the next one.